Hello, my name is Jenny, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the National Institutes of Health. Now imagine you're relaxing on a park bench. Your mind is wandering, you're breathing steady, and your body's still. Then suddenly, a large dog runs up to you. You're surprised, maybe even a little scared or excited. So now you're more focused, and your heart rate and your breathing get faster. You've gone from a calm state to a state of heightened alertness and arousal. Now every day, our brains constantly dial arousal up and down. However, for people with conditions like schizophrenia, anxiety, and depression, the ability to regulate arousal is thrown out of whack. Now given how important arousal is for a well-being and health, my lab wants to know more about how it's controlled by the brain. We study arousal using zebrafish, which are special because they grow up fast and they're transparent when they're younger which means we can easily see and manipulate the neurons in their brains. We found that we can increase arousal in these fish by subjecting them to flowing water, which is basically a miniature version of current in a river. And when we do this, the fish swim more and have more sensitive vision for several minutes afterwards, even after the flowing water has already stopped. By studying this behavior, I've identified several parts of the zebrafish brain that are important for increasing arousal in response to this flowing water. And so now I'm trying to narrow down the specific neurons in those areas that are important for controlling that arousal. What's more, to identify the chemicals these neurons produce, my lab exposes zebrafish to different drugs that mimic chemicals in the brain that change how neurons talk to one another. Identifying which neurons increase arousal and the chemicals they use to do so is really the first step towards understanding how healthy brains control arousal. It could also help us later develop ways to manipulate a person's level of arousal for therapeutic reasons.